there has something in the ground, Ko. Satsujin chuckles darkly. Behold, this is my demon blood art. Carnivorous soil, he reveals. Kojo's eyes narrow in question. Carnivorous soil? His eyes glancing down at the rip- rippling ground. The redness of it made it appear like an ocean of blood. Its texture seemed similar to mud. It simply put it to it. Anything of organic matter that comes in contact with my soil will eventually be devoured. The soil, the foul demon explained. However, in addition, if the blood of a human or animal is healthy, the soil has the capability to produce any plant. For instance, a beautiful flower. Satsujin chuckles. Your eyes whined at this as you completely understood. So, that's what he meant by make you and Kojo a part of his so-called garden. Let's say you, my boy. The demon pointed towards Kojiro. Suddenly, two tendrils of strand poured from the ground, both leaking a bloody stream of blood and mud. Let's see what flower you make. Intently, the bloody tendrils came straight for Ko. Kojiro! You exclaim, just as the flame pillar drew his blade from the hold. Get down, my love. He tells you, and you immediately did as told, as you both kneel side to side. With a striking clash, Kojiro manages to block one of the tendrils and you. The other? He hears a painful moan from you that worries him, but he can't let his focus go away from the battle yet. Are you okay, Yin? Yeah. You reassure him. The stinging pain in the, your bleeding ankle was caused, has been causing you discomfort. Gritting, your, gritting his teeth, Kodro is fast to pre- predict his next move and slices the tendril, forcing it to back off the, for the time being. He glanced briefly towards you, seeing you swing your spear like a baseball bat and hacking off the a tendril. And Kojo was grateful and gratefully impressed by your abilities to improve. Oddly, it felt like stabbing into flesh rather than soil as blood thickled poured from the gush- gushing wounds. The air is thick and the copper smell of iron and wet ground as more tendrils emerge out of the ground. I'm curious, though. Your fiery appearance suggests a g- glamorous lily. Yet again, I'm thinking of Tiger Lily. Very flammable, those things. <laughs> Satsujin chuckles before turning his demonic eyes towards you. And you, my dear. I'm very curious to see what lovely flower you'll be. He gives you a heated look while slicking his lips. You felt the need to vomit at that as a tendril shot your way. You reacted quickly by conjuring up a soil, a solid wall of ice, shielding you and your lover from harm. A bloody tendril pounded against it, trying to break it. However, it only caused more ice to appear. Yet, it won't hold it much longer. At least it gave you and Kojo some time to think of a plan. You just have to find an opening to get close to Satujin. If only you can pass that carnivorous soil. Apparently, seems it's only his defense. God be damned. Two used to have survived worse situations than this. As Kojo quickly turns towards you, seeing how you struggle to keep the ice wall up. Yin, he starts, and you immediately understood and nodded before releasing the ice wall. And before the bloody tendril could break through it, Kojo quickly picks you up and jumps over to a nearby ledge, away from harm's reach. (laughs) Running away from me now, Flame Pillar? You'll get nowhere, Satsujin laughs. Just accept your worsening demise. Kojo simply ignores the boisterous demon as he tends to you. Pain blooms from a point in your ankle and you cringe to see more blood soaking through your sock. Ow! 
You grunt as your lover put a cloth down enough to see tiny puncture wounds. Ian, it's fine, okay, Ko? Don't worry about me. Just focus on Satujin, you tell him before taking a step back, stampering, but manage to stay upright. Koju's eyes wind in awe as you pulled a favorite colored cloth around from your spear and dressed and dressed your wound to stop it, the bleeding. It didn't feel too deep, but it wasn't careful. Oh, you weren't careful. You'll end up losing a lot of blood. And you weren't about to die like this. Gods be damned, you have come so far and even survived worse situations than this. You can do this. You both can do. Stay here, my love. Kojo says slowly, and you glance to see his back towards you. With his red blade drawn, you quickly, practically feel the heat and rage transpiring off of him. Ko, but before you can even ask, Kojo suddenly leaps, leaving you on the ledge. Blazing flames wrapped around his blade as Kojo charges toward Satujin. You marvel at how unbelievably fast he was. Clearly a marvelous result of his ex- exclusive training, and yet... He still wasn't as fast as Shinobu. <laughs> Coming after me, are you? Satujin exclaims, as several tenders of bloody sand come straight for him. However, with the, his tenderness, speed, and agility, you watch in awe as Kojo easily r- whipped and dodged the upcoming tendrils, charging towards the vile demon with his blade aiming to kill Satujin in one full swift. His movements. You immediately knew this form. Kojo was using his first form, a knowing flame. However, once he got close enough to land a hit, a sand of, a wall of sand immediately shielded Satujin from the oncoming attack. Nice try, flame pillar. Satujin grinned widely as a single bloody tendril emerged. Go! You could only watch in terror as it grazed his left arm and Kojiro quickly jumped back in order to avoid taking any more damage. Blood streams down his now injured arm, staining his white horror in the process. Rage coursed through you at the sight of your lover now wounded and bleeding. Although, Kojiro didn't even seem unfazed being injured as he merely just shaked his arms. Blood from his wound dipped into the ground, and you examined intently how it seeps into the soil below him. The liquid sand bubbles like water, as if flapping it greedily. Oh. Hmm. Your blood is rich and pure, Hashira. My soil is pleased and demands more. Satujin says as even more of those disgusting tendrils appear and came hurling towards Kojiro yet again. The flame pillar immediately braced himself for the impact, grudging through the throbbing pain in his arm as the tendrils came straight for him. Suddenly, he feels something cold against him. Fifth form. Kojiro hears your voice right beside his ear as his eyes whine in surprise at the sound of bowstrings being pulled. Ice arrow. You cried out before whip whips past Kojiro's head towards the tendrils. He saw an arrow made of solid ice, was sent it flying. Oh my. You say, and had happened, next, Kojo, left speechless, has an arrow soon multiply into hundreds of arrows that attacked the tendril. Upon impact, they descendingly exploded, creating ice plates that swirled over the bloody tendril. Impossible! What's with this attack? Satujin exclaims in disbelief. The temperature in the room suddenly drops as snow started raining down and onto the ground, gradually covering the blood-red soil in a blanket of ice and snow. Kojo slowly turned back to look at you and saw that you were holding your spear, but a bow materialized out of ice? He knows it's probably the externalization that's making his face that red right now. But right now, a part of him hopes that it's the sight of you that causes roses to bloom on his cheeks. 
A, what a generous sight to see on the battlefield. Such a beauty in the midst of chaos. My, my love. Do it now, Ko. You tell him, what? Kill Satujin now while he's defenseless. Koji immediately glances back and snaps out of his little trance, back to what you meant and saw that the soil has been freezing over. Satsujin's carnivorous soil was now turning into ice as the demon tried desperately to manipulate it. The soil contains 98% of blood, which means it's basically like water. So, with it being frozen, Satsujin can't use it, you exclaimed. Koji was absolutely starstruck. How did you... Move on that later, you say before giving him a warm smile. Right now, go and lap off the demon's head so we can go home. After your words, Kojiro beamed his signature smile and nodded before turning his attention back to Satujin. Will do, my snow flower, he says proudly and readies his sword, the bright red blade seemingly turning an amber gold. That smirk of his grows into a grin, big and beautiful enough to steal hearts, or, in this case, your heart and your chest. It's enough to make you forget about the throbbing pain residing in your ankle and the blood that's flowing down his arm in a little steer. A little steer. Blazing flames dance along his naturing blade, coiling and wrapping in brilliant flames. Energy, both beautiful and terrifying, slittering down his body as if they're accentuation of him. Koji charges and then lungs himself towards, breaking off a trunk out of the ground, sending debris and rocks flying everywhere. The world seemed slow and turned to Serenia as he sprouts familiar words that can be heard throughout the temple as it surrounds the flames that lied and wait beneath his skin. Ninth form, Rengoku. No, you can't win. Kojiro exclaims in fear as he, oh, Satsujin exclaims in fear as he tried to defend himself with what little soil that wasn't frozen he had left. However, realizing drawns that he had been too slow and Kojiro using his speed usually disappeared only in an instant to reappear right in front of him. It all happened so fast as Kojo swifts his sword down. Huge streams of crimson blood sprays onto the wall and Satsujin's severed arm went flying in the air. The demon howls in agony clinging onto his heavily bleeding wound before he stumbles around clumsily and not giving the dis disborn priest any more to regain. Kojo follows in with yet another attack, this time cutting right for the demon's waist. The bright red blade of Kojiro's Nichiren katana cut right through Satsujin's midsection as the demon's mouth opened to a slight scream. With that, the lower rank one, Satsujin, was dead, and Yokoyama Dan is saved. And on that day, a red spider lily bloomed, alongside with it, a blue one. <laughs>